You're aphasia. You're at a fancy wine tasting, swirling your glass and admiring the notes of oak and hints of cherry. Meanwhile, your weird friend is eyeing the bathroom, thinking, amateurs, you haven't lived until you've savored some well-aged toilet juice. Unknown to you, your friend has urophasia, which means he likes to consume urine. So taking the piss isn't just a British expression, it's basically dinner time. Urophasia is less of a disorder and more of a voluntary practice. It's like a delicacy reserved for the more advanced adventurous. Believers in urophagia obsessively claim that it has major health benefits, from clearing up skin conditions to boosting immunity. It's like they've discovered the fountain of youth, and it has apparently been in their bladder all along. Things get even crazier, as some urine enthusiasts prefer their drink aged, like a fine wine. They'll let it sit for days, or even weeks, before consumption. It's like they're running their own private brewery, except instead of hops and barley, the main ingredient is, well, you get the idea. So if you're ever at a dinner party and someone scoffs at your choice of drink, keep in mind that somewhere out there, a dude is proudly sipping his own leak. Cheers to that. Or maybe not. Hypersexuality. Imagine sifting through your phone contacts and realizing you've got more friends with benefits than actual friends. That's when it hits you that your love life is more crowded than a rush hour subway train. This is exactly what happens when you have hypersexuality disorder. Your libido is basically stuck in permanent overdrive, caused mainly by a chemical imbalance in the brain or past trauma. It's like your hormones decided to throw a 24-7 rave party. You see, this isn't just about having a healthy appetite for intimacy. This is more like being a starving person at an all-you-can-eat buffet, except the buffet is made entirely of potential sexual partners. Now, if you have this obsession, you find yourself daydreaming about sex more often than a male rabbit in the middle of mating season, bouncing around like it's a full-time job. This constant urge for sexual gratification can lead to risky behaviors. Work meetings become an exercise in restraint as you struggle not to imagine your coworkers in compromising positions. It's like your mind is a pop-up ad for adult content that you just can't close. Not only are you at a much higher risk of contracting STIs, but the compulsive behavior and emotional instability can also lead to other addictions, such as drugs and alcohol. Treatment usually involves medications, such as mood stabilizers, combined with therapy. It's pretty much like sending your libido to rehab, teaching it that there's more to life than getting laid all the time. After all, life shouldn't feel like you're constantly starring in your own adult film. Vararophilia. Let's say you're watching a competitive eating contest in full swing. Hot dogs disappear at alarming rates as contestants stuff their faces. However, you stand in the crowd watching with growing excitement, not because of the impressive eating speeds, but because you're imagining yourself as one of those hot dogs. Scenarios like this are common for someone with vararophilia, where they get their jollies from the idea of eating someone whole or being eaten. Now, before you start eyeing your neighbor suspiciously, rest assured that most vararophiles are content with keeping their desires firmly in the realm of fantasy. They satisfy their cravings with artwork, stories, or roleplay. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, but instead of slaying the dragon, you're hoping it swallows you whole. However, there are different flavors of vor. You've got your soft vor, where the victim is swallowed whole and alive. And then there's hard vor, in which the victim is brutally torn apart, chewed, and digested in a more graphic sort of way. Not something for the faint of heart. It's like the difference between a gentle hug and a bone-crushing bear hug hug, except the bear is trying to devour and digest you. You see, this obsession may occur due to a fascination with the human body and power dynamics, or just a really, really intense food fixation. While Vararophiles might spend a lot of time mentally seasoning their next fantasy, at least they're not likely to steal food off your plate at dinner, they're too busy imagining you as the main course. Objectophilia. Now, objectophilia, or object sexuality, is like your brain decided to play a prank on your heart, convincing it that inanimate objects are the next Brad Pitt. Suddenly, that sleek lamp in your living room isn't just illuminating your space, it's lighting up your love life. Caused due to some forms of autism or childhood trauma, objectophilia gives a whole new meaning to the idea of love. Imagine going on a date to Home Depot and genuinely getting butterflies in your stomach. Look at the curves on that fire hydrant. Some objectophiles even identify as mechasexual, attracted specifically to machines, which gives a whole new meaning to getting your engine revving. Now, this results in a complete inability to form a healthy romantic relationship with another human being. And sometimes, trying to make love to objects might result in bitter social isolation and even public embarrassment, because it turns out people don't really want to hang around you if you're constantly seen proposing to traffic lights. Jokes aside, objectophilia is a very real obsession that can lead to genuine emotional attachments. 
So the next time you see someone getting a bit too cozy with a statue, bear in mind that sometimes love works in mysterious ways. Apotemnophilia. You've always felt there was something extra about you. While most people wake up wishing they had more. More money, more time, more hair, you just can't shake the feeling that you'd be happier with less. Specifically, less limbs. The term cutting edge takes on a whole new meaning when you have an obsession like apotemnophilia. It's like your body is playing a game of Jenga, and you're convinced removing a piece will make you feel complete, which is very ironic. Imagine looking at your reflection and thinking, you know what would really bring this outfit together? One less arm. The disorder may be caused by severe identity crisis or neurological issues affecting the brain. It's like your brain's GPS is adamantly insisting that the route to happiness involves a detour through the amputation clinic. Your limbs feel like party guests who've overstayed their welcome, and you're itching to show them the door. You would find yourself eyeing prosthetics catalogs, the way most people browse fashion magazines. Your Pinterest board is less dream wedding and more dream amputation. Unfortunately, in extreme cases, people with this disorder may turn to self-mutilation, which could even be fatal. So it's always better to reach out for help if you've been daydreaming about life with fewer limbs lately. Pika. Remember when, as a kid, you had a phase where you'd want to eat anything you could get your hands on? Well, imagine if that phase never ended, and now you're a grown adult with a burning desire to chow down on your pencil collection. This is kind of what life is like for someone with pika. It's like your taste buds decide to rebel against the concept of food, and are now on a mission to consume everything other than actual nutrients. It is usually caused by nutritional deficiencies, mental health conditions, or strange cultural behaviors predominant in some parts of the world. Pika makes your regular period cravings look surprisingly normal. While your friend is asking for pickles and ice cream, you're eyeing that delicious looking brick wall, or wondering if your car keys would make a satisfying snack. You might find yourself sneaking bites of your favorite non-food items, like a kid stealing cookies from the jar, except instead of cookies, it's balls of clay. Now this disorder can lead to several stomach problems, such as bowel obstruction and even toxicity. The doctors will be scratching their heads as they examine your stomach, finding remnants of your latest paperclip feast or your entire rock collection. However, treatment like addressing nutrient deficiencies and other underlying factors through mild aversive therapy and reinforcement behaviors can help a lot. It's like teaching your taste buds that food is friend, not foe, and that the couch cushions are for sitting, not snacking. Body Dysmorphic Disorder You've always been a perfectionist, but lately your bathroom mirror has become your worst enemy. Every morning you engage in an epic staring contest with your reflection, convinced that your left nostril is slightly bigger than the right, or that your cheekbones aren't as defined as they should be. This might be the result of an extreme obsession called body dysmorphic disorder, BDD, where your brain turns into that brutally honest friend who always thinks there's something wrong with your outfit, except it does this 24-7, and the flaws aren't even real. You're more likely to experience BDD if you've dealt with abuse or bullying as a teenager, or if you suffer from disorders such as OCD and anxiety. Your makeup routine starts to resemble a military operation. You own more concealers than Sephora, each promising to hide the flaw that only you can see. The obsession can go one step further and lead to plastic surgery addiction. It's like playing a never-ending game of fix it. You think you've fixed one thing about your looks, but then your brain tricks you into seeing more things that you need to fix. Before you know it, you've visited so many doctors for surgery that you know them all by name, like they're your childhood friends. BDD is a serious condition that can take over your life faster than a trending TikTok dance. It's like your self-image decided to take a funhouse mere selfie and then convinced you it was real. Now, if you're facing body image issues, then instead of scheduling your next plastic surgery, try booking an appointment with a therapist. The goal isn't to change your appearance, but to adjust the lens through which you see yourself. Erotomania. Imagine you're just an average Joe, minding your own business, when suddenly you catch Beyonce giving you a sly wink during her concert. Most people would brush it off as a coincidence, but not you. You're convinced that Queen Bee is head over heels in love with you. This is how things work in the wild world of erotomania, where your brain decides to star in its own romantic comedy movie, except there's no romance. This happens when you face too much social isolation, or have mental health issues like schizophrenia. The obsession is characterized by an unshakable belief that a person, usually someone famous, is madly in love with you. It's like your mind is playing a twisted game of secret admirer, and you're always the winner. As your delusion deepens, you might start believing that your lover is communicating with you through hidden messages in the media, license plates, or even billboards. It's like the universe has become your personal Morse code machine, tapping out love notes only you can decipher. You might even start reaching out to your imagined paramour, sending letters, gifts, or showing up at their events, mostly uninvited. After all, 
true love knows no boundaries. Or restraining orders, apparently. Pyromania. Picture this. You're at a gender reveal party, watching as the expecting couple prepares to ignite their colorful firecracker. While everyone else is anticipating either blue or pink smoke, all you can think about is a huge puffy cloud, like in the cartoons when something blows up. It's as if you just want the party to be a blast. For someone with pyromania, playing with fire isn't just a saying, it's a way of life. It's like your brain decided to become an arsonist without bothering to consult you first. Now, this rare disorder is marked by an intense urge to start fires. Even a mere thought of fire lights up your brain. It's like your mind's got a match and it's just itching to strike. You're not in it for the destruction or insurance fraud. Nope, you just want to see the world burn. But that's not it. Things get even more heated if you have this disease. You often experience a buildup of tension before setting a fire, followed by an intense rush of pleasure and relief when you finally do. It's like your brain is a pressure cooker, and only a good blaze can release the steam. And just when you thought it couldn't get any wilder, you often stick around to watch the aftermath of your fiery handiwork. They're like proud parents at a school play, except the star of the show is a raging inferno. Interestingly, pyromania often coexists with other types of mood disorders that affect impulse control. Such conditions are often genetic, but can also be caused by factors like childhood trauma. So, to treat them, you have to focus on finding the cause of these impulses pulses and using behavioral therapy to counter them. In the end, it's all about finding a way to cool things down and channel your fiery spirit into something a bit less explosive. Maybe you could try cooking for a change. Hybristophilia. So you're swiping through a dating app looking for your perfect match, but to no avail. Because you aren't interested in someone with kind eyes or a stable 9 to 5 job. Nope, you want someone more exciting, more bold, like a guy who has been on the FBI's watch list for violent crimes, or maybe a serial killer with multiple life sentences. Now we're talking. In the twisted world of hybristophilia, aka Bonnie and Clyde syndrome, bad boy doesn't mean he forgot your birthday, it means he's got his own Wikipedia page under notable criminals. This is a strange condition where someone gets the hots for people who've committed serious crimes. It's like your heart playing cops and robbers, but you're always rooting for the robbers. These crime-loving cupids come in two flavors. First up, you've got your passive hybristophiliacs, who are content to admire their felonious crushes from afar. Then there are active hybristophiliacs who take it a step further by helping their criminal crushes commit more crimes. Talk about being a supportive partner in a relationship. This behavior might arise from a desire to save or change the offender. It's like adopting a rescue dog, except the dog is a human who's really good at breaking and entering. Moreover, low self-esteem issues or a need for excitement can also lead to this sort of a loving relationship. Some hybristophiliacs are drawn to the fame and notoriety of well-known criminals. It's like shooting for a celebrity relationship, but with mugshots and instead of headshots. What that means is you'd be willing to die to get an autograph signed from Charles Manson instead of Brad Pitt. Interestingly, hybristophilia seems to affect women more than men. It's like nature's way of ensuring that even the worst of humanity can still find a Tinder match. 